right, everyone. Welcome. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit. The reading today is our brother David. And the title of today's lesson, The Trees of the Garden. We're going to go into the Garden of Eden. And we're going to see about the trees that the Lord placed in the garden. And we're going to break down these trees. We're going to keep it real simple today. Because there were trees that were there that were actually for food. And then there were two physical entities there that were named by tree. One was the tree of life. And the other one was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're going to put faces, if you will, to these two trees. And we're going to show you exactly who was in the garden with Adam and Eve. And then we're going to show you that it's because mankind ate from the wrong tree in the garden that sin and death came into the world. And in order to gain the right back to the right tree to find out how to live forever, there's a process and a way that we do that. So we're going to start this off in Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis, the first chapter. We're just going to deal, we're going to break down what the Bible says are the trees that were in the garden. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. And Brother David, when you're ready to start this precept, brother, we're going to start it in verse 11. Genesis 1 and verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So you've got the ass, the, the grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Not seedless. Seeded, because the seed's in itself. And when it gets old, and it doesn't get used, it doesn't get eaten, that fruit, you've got seeds that fall off that fruit as it dies to bring back more fruit the next year. So the seed within itself, go ahead, brother. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after its kind. And God saw that it was good. Everything could go ahead and continue to procreate. You can eat the fruit that you wanted to, eat the herbs that you wanted to, the vegetables that you wanted to, and anything that you didn't eat would make itself grow again the following year. Go ahead, brother. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Let's skip down to verse 29 and continue. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree which is in the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. So now the Lord gave us all the herbs and all this and all the fruit yielding trees. And it was for food. So all the trees in the garden that came up out of the midst of the garden that grew in the garden were for food. Let's continue. Let's go to Genesis the second chapter and pick it up at verse 1, brother. Genesis 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Uh huh. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in he rested from all his work which God created and so made. So the first six days of the creation, God is making things. And he saw that it was good. The evening and the morning were the first day, all the way through six days. And then the Lord rested on the seventh day. Go ahead, brother. Um, let's skip down... Um, well, wait, no, go ahead and continue. Genesis 2, uh, what, what are you at, verse 3? Yes. Go ahead and continue. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. And the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused rain to fall upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Uh -huh. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So now you had these trees growing up in the middle of the garden, and it wasn't even raining then. There was just a mist that came up in the morning and would water these trees and these herbs and all these bushes and everything that were bearing seed-yielding fruit. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord God formed man of the, of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And then God made man. Go ahead. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put a ma the man whom he had formed. In this garden that the Lord had created for these six days, he put man in this garden to till it. Go ahead, brother. 
and out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Uh huh. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now we see we have all these trees that grew up in the midst of the garden that were watered by this mist that would come up out of the ground. And then the Lord created man and he put him in the garden to take care of the garden, to be the husbandman of this vineyard, the Garden of Eden. And then also, in the midst of the garden, there were two other trees. These didn't grow up in the garden. These were placed there by God. You had the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you had the tree of life. Let's continue. Let's go to 16 and continue, brother. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So now of every tree in the garden, you got free reign. And knock yourself out. You hungry? Go ahead and eat. Go ahead, brother. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I'm forbidding you to taste that tree. I don't want you to go near that tree. You're not to eat the fruit off that tree. Because the day that you eat the fruit off that tree, I'm killing you. Skip to 21 and continue, brother. And the I'm Lord, sorry, one more verse. Verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So the Lord said, after he commanded that they could eat of all the trees of the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said it's not good for man to be alone. So God's going to create woman. Skip to 21 now and continue. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh -huh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Go ahead, brother. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Uh-huh. Therefore, she shall leave... Uh, I'm sorry. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. One more verse. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So now God saw it wasn't good for man to be alone, that he needed help. And so he created woman. And at this particular time, there's no curses. The man and women, they're equal. But the woman was a help for the man because it wasn't good for man to be alone. The Lord saw a way in His infinite wisdom to create a family and to keep the earth populated with men. Let's go to Genesis, the third chapter, and pick it up in verse 1 and continue, brother. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So now you've got this serpent, more subtle than any beast in the field that the Lord God had made, and he saw the woman, and he comes up and he starts a conversation with the woman. The serpent does. Go ahead, brother. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. So the woman's going to go ahead and get into this conversation with this tree, or with this serpent, rather. Not with a tree, with the serpent. Go ahead. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Uh -huh. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So now the serpent saying, Well, wait a minute, man. You're not going to die if you eat from that particular tree that the Lord said not to eat from. Go ahead, brother. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He didn't really mean that because God knows that in the day you eat from that tree, you're going to be just like him. Somebody's trying to come on the Zoom feed. Because you're going to be just like him. So he's going ahead and he's enticing this woman. This serpent's enticing this woman. Let's go to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Let's put a name on this serpent. Because the Bible doesn't leave things out there hanging. Nothing's a mystery. And anything that is a mystery is not salvational. Because the Lord gave us his word for us to... The Lord says that it's an honor to seek things out through His Word. And it's in His Word salvation lies. And it's through the seeking and constant Bible study and prayer and meditation through His Word that the Lord reveals salvation to each and every one of us. He doesn't leave anything out there hanging. Let's go look at what this serpent was that the woman was talking to in Genesis, the first, uh, third chapter. Revelation 12, and let's pick it up at verse 7, brother. 12 and 7. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So we've got this dragon fighting 
against Michael and his angels. Michael and his angels, those are holy angels. Those are gods. They're, in, they're on God's side. They're part of his army. So they're holy angels or holy spirits. And you've got this dragon and his angels. So they're the ones that are rebelling. So those are unholy angels or unholy spirits. Go ahead. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And so this dragon and his angels, they lost. And there wasn't a place found for them anymore in the third heaven. Go ahead. And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So now we're seeing who this serpent was that was dealing with the woman back in Genesis in the garden that was dealing with Eve. That serpent was this dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Eve was talking to Satan. Go ahead, brother. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation, and the strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And that's one of the reasons Satan got cast out of heaven with the angels, that he persuaded to rebel with him. Because he was always accusing the brethren. Go ahead, brother. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. But they overcame him by obedience. That's the blood of the Lamb. That's how you come under the blood of the Lamb. It's through obedience to His Word. Go ahead, brother. And by the word of their testimony. Uh-huh. And they loved not their lives unto the They death. didn't love their own lives unto death. They served God regardless of the personal consequences. Go ahead, brother. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Therefore all ye that dwell in the heavens rejoice. There's two people rejoicing. you got the Father and the Son, and then you got all those Holy Spirits or angels. They're all rejoicing. Go ahead, brother. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. But and of woe the sea. to man. Woe to mankind because they're the inhabitants of the earth. Go ahead. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So now he knows he's only got a short time. And he's got great wrath because he knows his time is short. No difference than like a weekend. You're working a job five days a week and you're busting your hump ten hours a day or whatever. Friday night rolls around, man, I got the weekend. Saturday night rolls around, you're going, man, my time is short. I got to get ready tomorrow, get everything ready for, for work and everything. Oh, man, I got all this laundry to do. I got all these errands to run. My time is short. Well, Satan's thinking about the same way, only he's a little perturbed because he knows his time is short. His destruction's right around the corner. His eternal damnation. So now he's a little perturbed. He's got nothing but wrath toward mankind. Let's continue. Let's go to Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Let's see how Satan got into this predicament. Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. And let's pick it up at verse 12, brother. 14 and 12. Go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did sweep in the nation? What caused you to get booted out of heaven by God, Satan? Go ahead, brother. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars There's of God. There is that false pride. Pride always comes before the fall. Go ahead. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. Go ahead. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. God said, yeah, you got these aspirations all right, but you're leaning on your own understanding because I'm going to pull a rug out from under you. Go ahead, brother. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms? And that's going to be us one day. This is the one? This is the one that we were fighting against? This is that spiritual wickedness in high places? We're going to look at this and we're not going to believe that it's this being. But let's continue. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. And we're going to start this off in verse 11. 28 and verse 11. Go ahead, brother. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me. It's saying, always the word of the Lord coming unto the prophets who are writing it in a book for us to read. But it's always the word of the Lord. The New Covenant in the New Testament, it tells us that. That holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And we could read where the Lord told them to write it in a book. That's what we're reading today. The message straight from our Father. 
Go ahead, brother. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Uh -huh. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Uh -huh. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, and the emerald, the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Yes, sir. Thou art the anointed cherubim that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, and thou wast walked up and down in the midst of the stones uh -huh. of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. This was the anointed cherub that covers. This was the Holy Spirit at one time. This was the one that brought life to mankind. This was the one that brought the message from God on how to gain eternal salvation. Go ahead, brother. Till iniquity was found in thee. But then he was found to be a sinner. And we read why. He puffed himself up. He wanted to be above the clouds. He wanted to be above the throne of God. He wanted to be above God. Go ahead, brother. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Jesus even told us in the Gospels that he watched Satan get booted out of heaven. Go ahead, brother. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Yes, sir. Let's go back to Genesis, the third chapter. Now that we know who's dealing with the woman, this is Satan that's dealing with Eve. Genesis 3. Genesis 3. And brother, we're going to pick it back up at verse 6. Genesis 3 and verse 6. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruits thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So Eve is over there, and she's talking to Satan, and so she's listening to him. And her husband's with her, and he's listening right along with her. Go ahead, brother. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, I'm sorry, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst uh -huh. the trees of the garden. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? So now they hear God, they hear His voice, and they hide themselves. And God says, where are you? Go ahead. And He said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And Adam says, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. But when God created them, they were naked and they weren't ashamed. They weren't ashamed until they ate from the, the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Because the knowledge of the tree of good and evil always tells you some truth. Satan always brings some truth and then turns around and twists it to your destruction. So I can only imagine they were naked, they weren't ashamed, until Satan started breaking down the different things a man and a woman could do, especially things that were an abomination in God's eyes. And then when they heard God, they knew all these things would happen when they were naked, and now they put two and two together, and they were ashamed and they hid. I hid myself because I was naked. And what does Jesus say to them? Or no, what does the Lord say to them? Go ahead, brother. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? That hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And God said, Who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? Now the puzzle, the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fall into place. This wasn't a literal tree. This tree, this serpent, Satan, was the knowledge of of the tree of good and evil. So we're starting to get a name on one of the trees in the garden. Go ahead, brother. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave of me the, the tree, and I did eat. First thing that Adam does, he blames the woman. Isn't that human nature? It wasn't me, Lord. It was that woman you gave me. Oh, would my husband made me do this. Them no good kids. If it wasn't for that neighbor, well, why are you in prison for murder, brother? Well, you should have heard the way he talked to me. Who did he think he was talking to? All puffed up like we're somebody. We're nobody. We're beggars. We're, here's what we are. 
We're a hundred thousand ants on the ground and the Lord is a human being standing there looking at us. And any time he wants to, all he's got to do is start walking on us. We're absolute nobodies. Everything we've got is coming from God. All our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding comes from God. All the wickedness in this world comes from God to punish us for not listening to God. All we got to do is be obedient to the scriptures. That's all we have to do to the very best of our ability, and the Lord puts a hedge about us. It's very simple. It's the simplicity of the gospel of Christ Jesus. But we always want to do things our way. We get told not to do something, we find a way to do it. Tell us where you're at and continue, brother. 13. Yes, sir. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. In other words, I talked to him. So, the Lord knew. Adam said, That woman you gave me, Lord. He goes, All right, I'll deal with you in a minute. What did you do, woman? And she was honest. Go ahead. Oh, I thought that was the end of that, brother. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm looking at uh, Ezekiel there. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the second chapter. So it was the woman that went ahead and, and was in transgression before the husband came and joined her. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Timothy 2, and we're going to pick it up in verse 13. 2 and 13. Go ahead, brother. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And we read that. Adam in the creation. Adam was the firstborn. God created him out of dust of the ground, breathed into his... Nostrils, the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And Adam wasn't deceived, but the woman was the one that was deceived. So the woman was the one that brought in the transgression. Where it became a mankind transgression is when the man went ahead and went along with her. Go ahead, brother. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. But notwithstanding, regardless, in other words, that she was the one that was in transgression, the woman can still be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. No different than what a man's got to do. It's the same for all of mankind. Just like what God gave to Israel is good for all nations. Whoa. Let's continue. Let's go to Hosea, the 10th chapter. Hosea, the 10th chapter. We're going to finish this up with Satan, and then we're going to move on to the tree of life. Hosea 10. Brother, one verse. Verse 13. Hosea 10 and verse 13. This is what they did in the garden. Go ahead, brother. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. Eve trusted in herself. There was a tree that be desired to make one wise. She ate from it, and then was talking to Adam about it, and he went along with it. They ate the fruit of lies. They ate the fruit of lies. They listened to Satan. Thou shalt not surely die. Let's talk about you being naked a little bit. All they had to say was, no thank you, man. Move on, man, because we're not supposed to talk to you. We're out of here. Satan kept going to, ah, la, 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 cover their ears and keep walking, man. I don't want nothing to do with you. But they let their own lusts conceive, and then it turned into sin. So we know that that one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that was Satan. And that's the same one that is the prince of this world today. The God of this world today. And the God of this world today always takes enough truth to spin the lie on it, to make you feel good, to make you believe in it. That's why we have to be so sober and vigilant. We have to prove all things in God's word. Let's continue, though. Let's go to Isaiah, the 65th, tra 65th chapter. Isaiah 65. I'm so tongue-tied today. Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. And we're going to pick it up in verse 2. 65 and verse 2. We're going to take a look at that tree of life in one second. 65 and 2. Go ahead, brother. 
I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that which was not good after their own thoughts. Uh huh. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Okay. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things. So they're walking the after their own way. They're leaning to their own understanding. In other words, they're being disobedient to what the Lord laid out on how they was supposed to conduct themselves. And now they're even going against God's dietary law, Leviticus the 11th chapter. Go ahead, brother. Which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke in my nose, and fire that burneth all the day. And they're saying that they're holy, when they're being disobedient to the voice of God. Go into Isaiah the 66th chapter, and let's pick it up at verse 15. Isaiah 66 and 15, go ahead. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And it's because they're over there in the garden and they're over there eating the swine's flesh and a broth of abominations and all this, that the Lord is going to come with fire and with chariots and with like a whirlwind to render his anger. Go ahead, brother. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Go ahead. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden, behind one tree behind in the midst. Behind one tree in the midst, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Go ahead. Eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Go ahead. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Yes, sir. So now it's very clear that that tree of the knowledge of good and evil was Satan. Now let's go look at the tree of life. Let's go to Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs 3. Satan went and rebelled against God, got booted out of heaven, and God threw him down here because God doesn't waste his creation. He threw Satan down here to test mankind. He said, well, if Satan can rebel, maybe man can rebel. I got Adam and I got Eve I'm creating. Let's see what they do. Don't talk to Satan. He's going to take you the wrong way. Man went right there, man. Just like we all do. Don't go through, you tell a child, don't touch that. He turns around and he's looking at you as he's reaching for him. Don't, don't you touch that. He's smiling at you and he's, he's looking for what you're telling him not to touch. That's human nature. That's why we got to lead and guard our hearts. And we got to do it with God's word so we're pleasing in his sight. Because we can see what he did to Satan. Just imagine what he can do to us. 100,000 ants in a 12-foot boot few steps and you got a couple thousand less ants. You want one of those to be you? Keep kicking against the Word of God. Proverbs 3 and verse 1. Brother, go ahead. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Remember, everything starts in the heart or the mind, and that's what makes you act out. Go ahead, brother. For length of days and long life and peace they shall add to thee. Uh-huh. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine go heart. Go ahead. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You keep the commandments, you find good favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. God even makes your enemies to be at peace with you. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and uh -huh. lean not unto thine own understanding. Yes, sir. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In all your ways acknowledge him. How do you acknowledge him in all your ways? You go see how he says to conduct yourself in all your ways. And when you do that, you're acknowledging him in all your ways. He's living in you, and you in him. Go ahead, brother. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. Skip the 13 and continue, brother. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Uh -huh. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Go ahead. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be com compared unto her. Yes, sir. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Uh -huh. Her ways are of pleasantness, and all her paths are of peace. Yes, sir. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Wisdom is the keeping of God's commandments. Understanding is knowing how to do that. By doing that, it's a tree of life. 
It's a tree of life. Let's go to Psalm, the 51st chapter. Psalm, the 51st chapter. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Psalm 51 and verse 2. Go ahead, brother. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Yes, sir. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before Sisters me. Sisters and brothers, this is daily. Every night when you go to sleep, you're supposed to be looking back at your day to see if you can bring your prayers to God or if someone's got ought against you or you got ought against someone else. You can't always say something that's going to make peace that night. But if you can, you do. You take it before God and He'll show you. Go ahead, brother. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Yes, sir. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. This brother's repenting. That's all David's doing right here. He's repenting. Go ahead, brother. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Thou desireth truth in the hidden part, in the inward parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Because when you know wisdom and you apply it, it brings forth understanding. Let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Proverbs 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Proverbs 4 and verse 5. Go ahead, brother. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of thy mouth. Get wisdom and understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Go ahead, brother. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Wisdom preserves you until you get understanding. Go ahead. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Uh-huh. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. See, wisdom will preserve you until you get that understanding. But wisdom is the principal thing. There's only one place we get wisdom, sisters and brothers, from the Word of God. Let's go to Genesis, back to the third chapter. Genesis, the third chapter. Let's go look at the other tree now. Let's go look at it in detail. Genesis 3. Genesis 3, how do we get this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? That's going to, the wisdom that's going to preserve us, and that's going to enable us to get understanding, that's going to enable us to save ourselves. How do we get that? Genesis 3 and verse 22, brother, go ahead. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. Uh -huh. And now, lest he put forth his hand and also and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence it was taken. So now God said man has become like one of us to know good and evil. So unless he puts forth his hand and takes also from the tree of life, in other words, he talks to the tree of life to find out how to live forever, we got to get rid of this dude. So the Lord put him out of the garden. Go ahead, brother. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now this doesn't say that these cherubims, and these cherubims are nothing more than angels. You have to look that up on your own. Just do a concordance search. Look for cherubim and go see what it is. It's an angel. But because of the sake of the time that we like to do our lessons, and I'm not going to give you a three hour lesson. Some stuff you got to look up on your own. These angels weren't put to guard the way of the tree, uh, weren't put to guard the way of the uh, Garden of Eden. These angels were put there with flaming swords to guard the way of the tree of life. So man couldn't find out how to live forever. Let's continue. Let's go to Exodus, the 25th chapter. Exodus, the 25th chapter. God always gives us a physical to show us the spiritual. Let's go look at the physical. Exodus 25. And we're going to look at the Ark of the Covenant. Let's pick it up at verse 10. Exodus 25, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. The Ark of the Covenant is what the Lord used so He could go come down after man drove God off the earth, that God could come back and communicate with man. So He made an Ark of the Covenant, and He made a prototype. He made a physical to show man the spiritual. Exodus 25 and verse 10, brother, go ahead. 
And they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. So the Lord always gave Moses exact directions on how to build these things, and then he gave wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to the carpenters and the blacksmiths and the people that dealt with the gold and silver and all this. See, and he showed them how to do it. Go ahead, brother. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within and without, shalt thou overlay it. And shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about, and thou shalt cast four rings of gold. That's good. It. Skip down to 16 and continue. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall so give So he showed him how to make it and everything, how to carry it the whole nine yards, and now he's going to tell Moses what to put in it. Go ahead. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And then he's going to tell them exactly how to make the mercy seat, and what's going to be around the mercy seat, and why he's doing it. Go ahead. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work, shalt thou make them, in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub at the one end, and the other cherub at the, on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. Uh -huh. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. So you've got these angels, and they're on each side of the mercy seat, and they're looking at the mercy seat. Because when God comes to sit on this mercy seat, they're going to be looking at God. Because these are cherubims that were there with flaming swords to keep the way of the tree of life. They're protecting God from man. Not that God needs protection, but this is the physical to show us the spiritual. Go ahead, brother. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark, above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there will I meet thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I shall give thee in the commandment unto the children of Israel. So I'm going to come down and when I deal with you, when I talk with you, I'm going to be sitting on this mercy seat. So this is my place here on earth when I come to deal with mankind. And I'm going to deal with you, Moses, and with the high priest Aaron, and then you're going to disseminate the information throughout Israel. And then what Israel's going to do is they're going to go teach all the other nations how to serve me. That was God's plan for mankind's salvation. But let's see who this one between the cherubims or between the angels is. Let's go to Psalm, the 80th chapter. Psalm, the 80th chapter. Psalm 80. And one verse, brother. Verse 1. Psalm 80 and verse 1. Go ahead. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. Thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. So it's the shepherd of Israel that dwells between the angels. And it's the one in the garden is where we got the angels. They're like bodyguards. And he's in the midst of them. So he dwells between the angels. He's been around since the garden. The one that dwells between the angels is the creator. It's the one that made man. It's the one that punished man for sin. He's the one that dwells between the angels. We've got to find out who this is. Let's go to Psalm, the 99th chapter. Psalm 99. Psalm 99. One verse, brother. Verse 1. Go ahead. The Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. There's the one that sits between the cherubims ago. Again, let's go to Ezekiel, the 10th chapter. Ezekiel, the 10th chapter. We're going to hunt this one down that sits between the cherubims or between the angels. Ezekiel 10. Ezekiel 10. And brother, let's pick it up at verse 1. 10 and 1. Go ahead. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Skip down to verse 3 and continue. Now the cherubim stood on... Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Uh -huh. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. So you've got angels, and you've got the Lord appearing. And the angels appear, and the Lord appears in all His glory. Skip down to 18 and continue, brother. We've got to get a name on this God. Skip down to 18 and continue. Then... The glory of the Lord departed from off of the threshold of the house, 
and stood over the cherubims. There he is, between the cherubims again. He's there, he's over, above them, between them, he's around them. He's there with them. They're guarding the way to the tree of life. Go ahead. And the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. And when, when they went out, the wheels also were beside them, and every one stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. So this is the glory of the God of Israel. So we know this is the God of Israel. And we know this is the shepherd that sits between the angels. Let's go into Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, see if we can get any clarity there. Jeremiah 31. Remember, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. We get the whole piece of the puzzle that way. Jeremiah 31, and one verse, brother, verse 10. 31 and 10. Go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather them, and keep him, as a shepherd doth his flock. He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him, as a shepherd does his flock. This is that God of the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, that's sitting between the cherubs, or those angels. And he scattered Israel, and it says he's going to gather Israel. Let's go to John, the 10th chapter, and see if we can get a name on this finally. We're going to find out who's going to gather Israel. We've got to go, and we've got to go to the New Testament and see what Jesus has to say about this. John 10, John 10, and let's pick it up at verse 14, brother. 10 and 14. When you get there, go ahead. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and have known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and lay down my life for uh -huh. the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. One fold, one shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He gathers not only Israel, but all the strangers that serve him. And he's that shepherd that sits between the angels. The one that scattered Israel and the one that's going to gather Israel. That's even Christ Jesus. Let's continue. Let's go to Revelation, the 21st chapter. Revelation, the 21st chapter. So Jesus is that tree of life. Jesus is the tree of life. And all man had to do was eat from that tree of life. And he would have never gotten booted out of the garden. But man went and ate from the, from the one tree that God commanded him not to. All the trees for food and the bushes for food and the herbs and all the vegetables and everything that were for food that God gave man and then commanded him, there's two other trees in the garden. There's only one thing I want you to do. I don't want you to deal with this one tree. And man went and did it anyway. So now that one tree, if we would have ate from the tree of life, we wouldn't be in a predicament we're in now with all the pain and sorrow and death in the world. We'd be loving our neighbor as ourselves, and there'd be peace and there'd be harmony and God would be with us. That tree of life, that tree of life brought a message for mankind. And that's why all we had to do was eat from that tree of life. Let's see what that message was. Revelation 21, Revelation 21, and brother, let's pick it up at verse 3. 21 and verse 3. Go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Uh -huh. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And it could have been like this from the beginning if we wouldn't have ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Go ahead, brother. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he, write, and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Yes, sir. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the water of life freely. Well, in order to get it at the kingdom, you've got to get it now. Because we're supposed to be practicing now how we're going to live when we get to the kingdom. That's why this world's a proving ground, and it's according to the word of God, regardless of the personal consequences, that we earn our right into the promises. Now, there's no amount of works that we can do, so there's no human boasting about works. We're, we're all dead men walking. 
But God gave us a way to have that death sentence commuted, and that's by obedience to his word. Let's go to John, the fourth chapter. Gospel of John, the fourth chapter. Let's see what this water of life is. John 4. John 4. And brother, we're going to pick it up in verse 7. John 4 and verse 7. Go ahead. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Uh -huh. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And at that time the Israelites didn't have any dealings with anybody. They thought God was theirs and theirs alone, that the Messiah was coming to set up the kingdom and put them up on top of the world. Just like he had prophesied they were going to do. But they had been so disobedient so many times that the Lord was getting ready to have his fill with them. And at this particular time, they're in bondage again. Go ahead, brother. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give, give to me drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given to thee living water. Uh -huh. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, from whence... Then hast thou the living water. Uh huh. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Now remember, Jesus always dealt in parables because it, it wasn't for everybody. It was only for those that wanted to know, that wanted to prove what he was saying. No different than today. You can't just pick up this Bible and go to church and make the kingdom. You got to prove what this book says on how to walk. Go ahead, brother. Then Jesus answered and said unto her. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So Jesus wasn't talking about this water at this well that she was getting ready to drink physically. He was using that physical to explain the spiritual. Let's go to Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Isaiah, the 55th chapter. This water was his word. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. We're going to pick it up at verse 1, brother. 55 and verse 1. Go ahead. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and ye that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come and buy wine and milk without money, without price. The only price that there is to pay is the old man has to die. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Uh huh. And your labor for that which is satisfieth not? Uh huh. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Why are you listening to all these fables and all these traditions? Don't do that. Hearken unto me. Listen unto me and be satisfied. Go ahead, brother. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Even the sure mercies of David. David's in the kingdom, that's sure. Even the sure mercies of David. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15. And brother, we're going to pick it up at 15. 15 and 15. Go ahead. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me. And visit me, and revenge me of my persecutors, and take me not away in thy long suffering. Uh -huh. Know that for thy sake have I suffered rebuke. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Eating, drinking, thirsty, hungry, same thing. Go ahead, brother. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. At this time, it was Israel. Let's go to John, the sixth chapter. Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. John 6. John 6. Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. And we're going to pick it up in verse 27, brother. John 6 and verse 27. Go ahead. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Uh-huh. Then they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him, yes, whom sir. he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, 
that we may see and believe thee. What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from the heaven to eat. So now they're asking Jesus for a sign. He's over there. He's always breaking down the gospel of salvation. And they're always trying to trip him up, all the scribes and Pharisees. And others, they're asking legitimate questions. And they're coming to him and being converted. So now they're saying, our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. What kind of sign are you going to give us? Go ahead, brother. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from now, heaven. Now, Moses didn't give you that bread from heaven, but my Father's given you the true bread from heaven. Go ahead. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Uh-huh. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Then they said unto him, they, they were pricked in the heart, and they wanted to come to him. And they said, Give us this bread, Lord. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus, the word of God. Skip to 63 and continue, brother. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Eat my body, drink my blood. We do that to commemorate his death once a year on the Passover. The spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. I'm giving you physical examples to show you how to save yourself spiritually. Because you can only save yourself spiritually. You can't do it with any works. You can't do it with any works to boast about making the kingdom. You can only save yourself spiritually. The first thing you got to do is repent from sin. That's where we read with David in Psalm 51. Then you got to come to God. You got to be a tree of life by the keeping of the commandments. The simplicity of the gospel of Christ Jesus, sisters and brothers. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Let's go and see how God brings us this message of salvation. Let's go to 1 John, the 5th chapter. 1 John, the 5th chapter. 1 John 5. 1 John 5. We're going to read one verse and we're going to skip. Verse 7, brother. 1 John 5 and verse 7. God's protocol on how he brings man the gospel of salvation. Go ahead, brother. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Three that bear record in heaven. Our Heavenly Father. Jesus, the Word. John tells us that he's the Word. In Revelation 19, it tells you straight out he's the Word of God. And the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. Skip down to 10 and continue. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. So those three that bear witness, they bring the message. And he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Because if you believe Jesus, if you have faith in what he's telling you to do to gain salvation, you're proving his word. You know he didn't nail the moral law on the cross, and you're walking in your faith. So your faith becomes belief, becomes obedience. Let's go to Revelation, the first chapter. Let's make this protocol clear. Revelation 1, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Those three are one. They're three and one are one in the message they bring. They're not one, one entity, three people. They're not schizophrenic. The one talks this way, the other talks this way, and the other one, his head spins around and talks behind him. There are three separate entities. The Father, the Son, and the angel, the Holy Spirit. Revelation 1 and verse 1. Brother, go ahead. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, or the gospel of Jesus Christ, which the Father gave to him to show unto his servants things that must shortly come to pass. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. You can read about that in John. Go ahead, brother. He sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John. And he sent and signified it by that Holy Ghost or that angel unto his servant John, unto Israel. Go ahead, brother. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. And Israel bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things they saw. Because then when Jesus, when he was getting ready to go to the right hand of our Heavenly Father after he suffered and died for our sins and the sins of the world, he told Israel, go teach all nations everything I commanded you. 
Those that don't obey and, be, and are baptized will be saved. Those that they don't, they're going to be damned. The commonwealth of Israel, the new covenant. Now, let's go look in summary about what we covered today in the trees of the garden. We know that we have Satan trying to knock us down. He's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He's still there today trying to, trying to pervert the word of God. And the main way he does it is he does it through false doctrine. Then another way he does it, the most prevalent way that we know that he does it, is those that aren't being sober and vigilant, he gets up inside their hearts and he causes division and he sows discord. So we know about Satan. He's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we know about Jesus. He's the tree of life. We're commanded not to deal with Satan. And if we want to live forever, we've got to deal with Jesus. Let's go back to Psalm, the 51st chapter, and let's pick it up in verse 7. Psalm 51. Let's go in summary of what we dealt with here today. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And brother, we're going to pick it up in verse 7. 51 and verse 7. Go ahead. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. It's God that makes us clean through our sincere repentance. We don't need to do the hyssop. We don't need to do all this right now. That's old covenant stuff. That's where Esau and Edom and Ashkenaz over there are falling short. Trying to, well, they're, they have to do it because they've got to fulfill prophecy. But they're trying to get this red heifer so that they can do this perfect sacrifice and everything. The perfect sacrifice has already been made. It's Christ Jesus. Go ahead, brother. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Yes, sir. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Uh-huh. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Repentance. Create in me a, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Because we've eaten from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and now we see it was wrong, and we're sorry, we're repenting. Sincere repentance. Now all we want to do is eat from the tree of life, Lord. Lead us and guide us. Go ahead, brother. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't cast me away, Lord, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Go ahead. Restore unto me the joy of, of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Uh-huh. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. You have no good you can do for God until you repent first. Then you come to him. You start becoming obedient, now, the biggest way that you're teaching others is through your example. But then you're sitting down with them across the kitchen table, in the living room, on the couch. Or if the Lord makes you and sets you up as a minister, you're sitting up here and you're teaching congregations. You done with that, brother? Yes. Let's go to Proverbs, the 11th chapter. Proverbs, the 11th chapter. So the first thing we got to do is we got to repent. We ate from the wrong tree. We're trying to gain salvation, and the Lord is opening our eyes. Proverbs 11 and 1 verse, brother, verse 30. Go ahead. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So once we repent, we got to act right. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Who are the righteous? Those that fear God and keep his commandments. Let's go to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. How do we act right and act in righteousness? Ephesians 5 and 26, brother, go ahead. That he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By God's word. We repent. We want to be righteous. And we do that through God's word. That renews our mind and it washes us. Because it shows us how to conduct ourselves to be pleasing in his eyes. Now let's go to Revelation, the second chapter. God's telling us something. He's telling us to listen. Revelation 2. We've repented. We want to walk according to God's word. Revelation 2 and 1 verse, brother. Well, actually, yeah. 2 and 1 verse. Verse 7. 2 and 7. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. What's the Spirit saying to us, brother? To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. To overcome means that until either you sleep, you die, or Jesus returns and you get your change and you're meeting him in the clouds, to the very best of your ability, regardless of the personal consequences. I can't stress that enough. 
regardless of the personal consequences, you fear God and keep His commandments. Let's go to Revelation, the 22nd chapter, and this will be it. This is what happens if you overcome. Revelation 22. Revelation 22, and pick it up at verse 2, brother. 22 and 2. Go ahead. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. We're at the Father's kingdom now. We're at the Father's kingdom. We've repented. We're acting right. We're doing it according to God's word. We're listening to our Messiah through his word. And now we're at the Father's kingdom, and there's a tree of life. And it's on each side of the river. And the word of God is water. And on each side of the river, you got a tree of life. you got the Father and the Son. Go ahead, brother. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. And his servants shall serve him. You'll have the Father, Jesus, and you'll have all those that make the kingdom. Go ahead, brother. And they shall see his face. And his name shall be in their foreheads. Uh-huh. And there shall be no more night there. And they shall need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. Uh-huh. And they shall reign forever and ever. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. There's that protocol again. Everything's got to be done according to the way God gave it to Israel. Go ahead. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Behold, I come quickly, and blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Fearing God and keeping his commandments. 14, and this will be it, brother. Blessed are they that do his commandments, and they that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. That's how we get that right back to the tree of life. We keep God's commandments, and at the appointed time, we're going to make his kingdom. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter into God's kingdom. Sisters and brothers, the trees of the garden, the one tree, Satan, still around today. Stop talking to him. Start focusing your attention on talking to that tree of life, even Christ Jesus. The trees of the garden. Sisters and brothers, as always, we appreciate the opportunity to rightly divide God's Word, and we hope you got something from these scriptures.